when Alfred, at the beginning of his career, told people he was a pet groomer, no one understood what he actually did. Ten years later, his client list reads like a roll call of Russian celebrities, Moscow's who's who and their pets. At not a whisker short of a couple of hundred dollars for a standard dry cut, his services are more than a snip, transforming mere moggies into their owners' cutting-edge feline fashion fantasies. To those who say his craft is a needless luxury, his response is cutting. The foremost purpose of what I do is to make it easier for the owner to look after their cat or dog. Also, it is for the pet's own health. Twenty minutes later, the job's done, and another customer's fit for the catwalk. Pet grooming is becoming ever more elaborate, but one owner here in Novosibirsk has taken this in a radical direction that is causing a lot of controversy. Today's a big day for Mickey and his owner, Oksana. He's getting his first tattoo. We live in interesting times, and this is a tattoo just for such times. It takes three hours under general anesthetic. Being a Sphinx cat, the owner and tattoo, or should that be tattoo artist, thought of going down the Egyptian path. Look, I have a tattoo that looks exactly the same as the one I'm giving the cat. It's Tutankhamen's mask. But not everyone's so enthusiastic. The ethical thinking about animals in Russia lags behind the West. People here mostly buy animals for selfish reasons, and everything else that happens to them afterwards is a consequence of that. In statistical terms, pet grooming, particularly in its extreme forms, is still very rare. But the industry is expanding rapidly and remains unregulated with no barrier to charlatans competing with genuine professionals, like Anatoly. As the anesthetic wears off, Mickey is waking. Whatever he might think of his new look when he sees it, his owner and tattooist, at least, seem happy. Igor Grodnev, RT, Moscow and Novosibirsk.